The Mother series has undoubtedly had its fair share of setbacks and difficulties over the years. In fact, every single Mother title risked the chance of cancellation or not even happening at all. And it was through the support of fans and Shigesato Itoi's hard work and dedication that the projects were seen through in the end. Well, and Satoru Iwata's backing, of course. Despite the initial setbacks and issues the other two titles may have had, nothing could compare to the arduous 12-year development journey of Mother 3. From a dumped idea, a console change, to a lack of a Western translation, gamers were just lucky to see the game come out in the end. Today, I wanted to delve into one of the more interesting aspects of Mother 3's development, the existence of Earthbound 64. During the course of Earthbound, we had plenty of indicators that the game would get some sort of sequel, or spiritual successor that is. From the development sign in the middle of the game, to the question mark at the end of the phrase, the end, fans around the world were excited to say the least. What was to come? Why was the game started on the console? Why was it cancelled? What do we actually know about it and how it compares to the finished Game Boy Advance version? In today's video, I hope to answer all of this and more. So let's not waste any more of your time and get right into the video, shall we? After the long and grueling development of Mother 2 or Earthbound in the West, little did many know that the spiritual successor was already in development. Shigesato Itoi had a vision for an expansive, chapter-based title in the Mother series that would piggyback off the events of Mother 2 all the way back in 1992. Though not a sequel in the traditional sense, there were many items that carried over into Itoi's concept that fans of the first two installments would find worthwhile. The game was originally intended to be released on the SNES and take advantage of the console's pre-rendered graphics, much like in games like the Donkey Kong Country series and Final Fantasy VI. However, based on how delayed Earthbound was in getting out the door, chances were that Mother 3 would be hard and almost entirely impossible to release before the relevancy of the console was extinguished. The team at Nintendo had a different idea. After many discussions between Itoi, Miyamoto, and Awata, the decision was made to scrap the brief progress in the Super Famicom and move production directly to the Nintendo 64. That way the team could make use of the console's upcoming disk drive add-on to expand the game's story to 12 chapters with 12 playable characters. As though not to change things drastically, the development team kept the title as Mother 3 and in the West, Earthbound 64. Early screenshots of the game showed a character that looked very much like Ness, which if you're paying attention, modeled after what Earthbound did to the original title with Ninten. However, the design was supposed to be Klaus, and over the years of development was changed. The basis for Mother 3 was an interesting one, as Itoi extracted heavy influence from the novels The Notebook, The Proof, and The Third Lie by German author Agota Kristoff. The Amazon description for the books read, With all the stark simplicity of a fractured fairy tale, the trilogy tells the story of twin brothers Klaus and Lucas locked in an agonizing bond that becomes a gripping allegory of the forces that have divided brothers in much of Europe since World War II. Although the events of Mother 3 would not copy Kristoff's works verbatim, the overarching plot and main character names stayed the same. I highly recommend the books out there if you ever get a chance to read them, though they are a bit stoic and apathetic. There were a few unique challenges that the development team of Earthbound 64 faced that caused quite a few concerns at Nintendo. Miyamoto and Awata were so excited with Mother 2 as a game that they started work on the third title without any sort of a trial period. There were a few issues with this approach that ended up hurting the team quite significantly. For starters, by not giving the team a trial period, a lot less of the script was written up for the game ahead of time. Combine this with the experience level of the individuals working on the project and you have a recipe for disaster. The lack of a trial period probably could have worked, but most of the team involved with Mother 2 were assigned to other projects, thus didn't really have any time or vision of the original core. Of course, Itoi was there, but many of the greatest Mother 2 team members weren't. 
The other significant challenge faced by the team was the evolution of 2D to 3D. In retrospect, I'm pretty sure most of us could probably agree that the Nintendo 64 is one of the most poorly aged consoles in existence. Obviously, three-dimensional gaming was inevitable to unleash the max potential of video games, but it certainly wasn't without its fair share of downright ugly games. Earthbound 64 was set to be entirely 3D, another thing most of the development team knew literally nothing about. This caused many cuts to content, stalls in game production because of the steep learning curve for the modeling of the characters, down to the rendering of the backgrounds and everything else. Despite the many hurdles standing between the team and the game's completion, they remained optimistic and trudged along with development. In November 1996, Itoi was interviewed by 64 Dream, and he was questioned about how much of the game was finished. His response was interesting. The supporting scripts haven't been written yet, but all the scenarios are done, and the map is done, and uh, all that's left is bringing the characters to life in it. So here on are just the details. But in games, details are everything. As long as those steps aren't cleared, there's no difference between a completion rate of 60% or 20%. I think what he was trying to say is, if the game's not complete, it doesn't matter what the percentage is. <laughs> In late 1996, Earthbound 64 and the console it was projected to be on was still in its infancy, but there finally existed enough footage from the game that Nintendo showed it off at Space World that very same year. あのマザーシリーズの最新作がついにNintendo64で登場する。立体的になったぞ。Japanese and Western fans alike were foaming at the mouth to get their hands on Earthbound 64. I mean, just look at the reaction from the girl in this clip. Magazine publications all over the world were starting to add the title to the list of games that were supposed to come out earliest on the Nintendo 64, and development was well underway. The game was initially sought after to utilize the rumble pack during battle sequences, something unique to the fifth generation of consoles. However, after further thought, Itoi pondered that the weight of the rumble pack may get a bit exhausting after hours of playing a long RPG, and I, I, I could honestly see that. Through the next couple of years, periodic game pictures and other clips would surface in various publications, but the game still didn't have a concrete release date. Itoi and the rest of the dev team were hard at work, but people were starting to get skeptical. A project that went from one of the first games on the N64 to literal silence between 97 and 98 was not a good look for Nintendo. It was certainly no secret that challenges existed for Earthbound 64, but something, anything would have been nice. Given the amount of things that Itoi wanted to cram into the game, he actually originally intended for it to be a 2D game on a 3D console. But Miyamoto and Awata squashed his hopes and even mentioned that anybody wanting to play a game on N64 would want it to be in 3D. I have my own qualms about that statement, but that's also looking back with rose-colored glasses, so everything is better in hindsight. Earthbound 64 was pretty intriguing in that it sparked just as much interest from Western audiences as it did the Japanese, and the coverage was quite large, albeit some of it speculative in nature. It wasn't until E3 97 that the first perceived release date was announced by any member of Nintendo when Itoi himself assumed that the title would be one of the first four games released with the N64DD when it would make its debut in 1998. Although it seemed like an offhanded comment at the time, most fans took that date to heart and ran with it. He also theorized that an expansion of the game would be released for the console as well, adding additional content only made possible by the disk drive capabilities. But we all know that Mother 3 did not release in 1998. The N64DD experienced delay after delay, and with it came other games along for the ride. Unfortunately, Itoi and the team at Nintendo had sunk so much time and effort into making the title linked to the console expansion that there was really no turning back. 
With the add-on delayed yet again to 1999, there was a large period of time where development updates were essentially non-existent. That didn't stop people from being hyped up for the game though, as E3 1998 showcased some clips from Earthbound 64 that proved the game was alive and well. The game also experienced a change in working titles a few times throughout development, including Forest of the Chimera, Chimera and the Forest, and finally Fall of the Pig King. This was evident by the pig mask statues shown in the small bit of gameplay up to that point. As 1998 ticked into 1999, people began to get a bit nervous about the title coming out at all. Etoy and the team at Nintendo announced that they hoped for the game to be released by mid-1999, then by Christmas, and ultimately when Space World 1999 rolled around showing more demo material for it, fans were left scratching their heads, and for good reason. Nintendo assured everyone that development for the game was well underway and they were shooting for a March 2000 release date. Yay! Finally, something concrete from the company themselves. It was also important to note here that the demo footage from Space World was the longest single segmented trailer of Earthbound 64 ever released, and for an N64 game, it looked pretty incredible. Many took note of the Lucas and Klaus minecart clip as one of the most impressive cutscenes on the N64. The trailer showcased the game's focus on a deep plot and battle mechanics, surrounded by a scarf of musical comedy. People were so stoked to finally play the game they had waited years for, and Nintendo was going to deliver the goods. Of course, if you're familiar with gaming history, you may have heard that the Nintendo 64 disk drive was deemed a critical failure. Officially released on December 1st, 1999, the Japanese-only console was met with widespread criticism right off the bat. Many gamers considered it cumbersome and unnecessary, while the add-ons for the existing games didn't really justify the price tag. I talked about it a bit in another video you can check by clicking up above. Either way, the N64 DD was considered a major flop, and with Nintendo losing loads of money on it, most of the games planned out for it in the future were also in jeopardy. So with the unfortunate fallout of the ambitious console add-on, Earthbound 64 development shifted back to the N64 solely, and who knows how far along things really were before that even occurred. To help aid with the project, Miyamoto and Iwata ordered some of the team at HAL Laboratories and the team from Pokemon Stadium to redirect to the project in hopes of salvaging what they could. Despite this major setback, Itoi maintained an open line of communication with his fans and remained confident that Mother 3 would be released in the year 2000 as previously announced. However, just like the previous announcements and promises from Nintendo, March 2000 came and went, with no update from Nintendo. Then, on August 22nd, 2000, Shigesato Itoi published the following on his website. To be honest, the reality of what's happening still hasn't hit me yet, but I will express a little bit of what I'm feeling here. Last night I quickly sped my way through the parts of the game that were done so I could get screenshots to put up on the site. Mr. Miura from the Mother Team's art department took up the controller and three hours had passed as we played through the battles in the game and discussed various things. I watched him play the entire time. The staff at Hobonichi watched the entire time too. There was laughter, shouting, some people who almost broke into tears. It was almost like they were playing an actual game on the market. However, this was a memory of the future. The game was developed in secrecy. And until then, I never once heard a user's laughter in a situation such as the one above. But once I saw people innocently playing through and shouting things like, Whoa! I finally began to feel sadness. Even after it was decided that development on Mother 3 was to be cancelled, people still kept asking when Mother 3 will be coming out. With the unanswerable answer stuck in my throat, I feel that after all the time that has passed working on it, I myself was never able to fully believe that this game would never come out. However, the reality is that despite being six years in development, Mother 3 has been cancelled. In regard to the parts that have been completed, I can say with complete confidence that it's a very fun and interesting game. I'm also very proud of the story and with its constant plot twists, 
but in realistic terms, it is now a phantom game that only the development staff knows. It is indeed sad, but accept the truth as truth. And that was that. Allegedly, after a roundtable discussion between Iwata, Miyamoto, and Itoi, they all agreed that it would be best to shelve the project for the time being. The continued resource strain for Mother 3 had begun to rob more high-profile endeavors like Project Dolphin, the GameCube prototype, of money and time. It was a decision that none of them wanted, but all realized was necessary for the company. I especially applaud Itoi's selflessness to let go of his baby like this, but he saw the writing on the wall. There was a brief inquiry to start the project over again on the next console generation, but in the end, everyone was exhausted and wanted a break. Iwata believed the scope of the game had just become too large and issues seemed to arise the more they progressed. He even admitted to having scaled the project back in order to regain control of it, but there was just too much to handle at the time. Itoi admitted that the game was pretty ambitious and the team was too experienced with 3D game development. Earthbound 64 was expected to have 10 characters to choose from, with the game having between 40 and 60 hours of gameplay. The new developers, they were just too unfamiliar with the series and it resulted in further confusion, even after how Laboratory and Pokemon Stadium individuals came onto the project. To make matters worse, Iwata was unable to be on site for the project full time, which ultimately slowed down production. He had a wealth of programming knowledge and was a technical wizard. His role as president of HAL Laboratory forced him to make frequent trips to the United States as well as spending more time in Kyoto in order to keep the company from going bankrupt. This ultimately meant that he had much less hands-on time with the project. Miyamoto also admits he wasn't on site as much as he would have liked to have been doing God knows what with his wide scope role with the company. He also stressed that the development shift from being on the Super Famicom to the N64 to the N64DD and then back to the N64 just opened up the project to even more issues. His theory as to why Earthbound 64 was eventually cancelled was due to a lack of skeletal work. Shigesato Itoi has a brilliant mind and everybody knows that. He's very ambitious but he lacks knowledge of things when it comes to developing and programming. Miyamoto also suggested that Itoi and his team needed to work on building the smaller details first and let things like story and plot development flesh itself out. Itoi referred to this as like hiring nothing but construction workers who build exterior walls. Itoi admitted that he didn't consider the technical ramifications of his ambitions. The example that he gave was having 12 chapters, each one more convoluted than the last, with various gameplay elements, a huge emphasis on cutscenes and timelines that overlapped one another. Itoi's inability to foresee the technical issues that would arise from this is just one of the many theories as to why the game was cancelled. When discussing what form Earthbound 64 could take on instead, Shigeru Miyamoto actually said the team considered the possibility of bringing it over to the Nintendo GameCube. However, they dismissed it as more powerful hardware wasn't the only answer to fixing the issues Earthbound 64 had been plagued with. During the post-cancellation interview, Owata, Miyamoto, and Itoi discussed the possibility of Earthbound 64 even being adapted into a novel. Itoi also considered making the plot of the game into a paper play. It's a, basically a form of street theater that involves swapping illustrated boards in and out of a diorama and, and you, get this, you get the story. But as the years passed, the release of the Game Boy Advance had sparked something inside of Shigesato Itoi, something that reinvigorated his love for Mother and the re-release of Mother 1 plus 2 had confirmed that Mother 3 was once again in development, this time for a handheld console. Granted, there was an understandable disappointment from some fans considering Earthbound 64 was just a mere figment and major console release was abandoned. However, what some fail to realize is how seamless a transition to the GBA would be. SNES titles just play so well on the handheld, and with the 2D approach, Itoi would have the freedom to do what he wanted. Onwards and upwards, Nintendo went, and the production for Mother 3 began yet again. But that's a story for another day. And there you have it, the story of the long-lost vaporware known as Earthbound 64. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode and unearthing some old history just as much as I did. Be sure to check out my other videos on the Mother series as well. This has been Press Start to Continue, and I'll see you next time.